Hello there, kitties. I'm Carrie, the vacuum chip witch. And I could say what Fran always says again in the lab. Because I've been on a uh, two week trip to my old city, and I've got some pretty interesting stuff that I got from there. I'd like to show you with some uh, follow-up videos uh, on one of the exhibits that uh, you will see but that would be another story let's get to the band so i've got this three boxes of stuff let's do this one later This one I will also do later, but this one gets my attention first. So, you might ask what is this? Uh, this is my old uh, work overalls that uh, I uh, left at the Book Arts Museum back in my old city. <laughs> it's, uh, it's covered with uh, teeny tiny specks of lead uh, because uh, that was my, uh, that was my uh, outfit uh, when I did uh, metal type casting. I need to I need to wash it and uh, I'll use it for some uh, mm -hmm. some uh, real deal work <laughs> where I'm getting my hands dirty. This is my um, old uh, moldy meter that uh, I uh, took to to watch uh, to my old study. Because I had some stuff to do, I didn't really want to take the fluke. <coughs> because if I damaged uh, a meter, I'd rather it be in the unity and not the fluke. My soldering station and the weller TCPS. Uh, I also uh, took to my old city because I had some electronic stuff to do. This is a uh, power supply that I'd like to repair, but uh, I'm not sure if I will get all the parts. Then filter cap this uh, is uh, desoldered. Those four resistors, uh, if I can, uh, if I can zoom on in, we've got uh, those four resistors. Uh, One point uh, eight ohms, four of them in parallel, all blown. But what else is blown? The controller chip uh, for the switch mode power supply has a teeny tiny hole and uh, I've never ever seen such a blown uh, optocoupler. <laughs> Talk about total discombobulation. The moose fat uh, is also desoldered and will probably need a replacement. Fortunately, the full bridge rectifier has uh, survived. I already tested it uh, back there. So that would be one project. I will try to get this power supply uh, up and running. This is empty, just took the box because they always come in handy. But this... Uh, 
This one takes a cake. It's named Fizomat and this is uh, an uh, exposure timer. It uh, worked uh, with a <coughs> offset plate uh, exposure machine that uh, you put a photosensitive plate and uh, then on top of this plate you put uh, a uh, transparent uh, foil and you shine uh, some uh, ultraviolet light uh, originally from uh, arc discharge uh, lamps uh, then they were replaced with uh, with uh, high pressure quartz lamps and uh, this device uh, used a uh, photosol as a uh, light sensor in the exposure unit and uh, based on the, the current uh, flowing through the photosensor it uh, <laughs> It uh, controlled uh, the exposure, adjusted the exposure time. We'll go for it uh, in another video because it is uh, very interesting inside and uh, I'd like to keep this video pretty short. So that's for the Visomat. For now, and now I've got another box with some more interesting stuff. Let me put this back there. So what do we have here? Vacuum fluorescent display bought it uh, at uh, an uh, electronics fair and this VFD has a uh, pretty interesting interface uh, it's uh, not directly addressed uh, but has a uh, built-in controller and I might want to try to interface with that controller it has something like uh, like uh, I square C because um, it has something like I, I square C but uh, with an additional chip select line It has a uh, clock and uh, a data line, but uh, also a uh, chip select line. I don't know the communication protocols for this thing. Bunch of caps, bunch of cables, leftovers from one project. This is a uh, silicon rubber cable that uh, I'd like to replace on the Weller uh, soldering iron for more flex flexibility, but I'm not sure if uh, if I will do that because uh, turned out that uh, when I bought this cable, it's a little bit too rigid for my taste. But I might uh, use it for some other purpose. Some bags. Tint uh, copper wire. This comes in handy in point-to-point uh, -point wiring and and also uh, for perf boards. Some tidbits from uh, the hacker space in Wood, including uh, a bunch of uh, pretty useful ones. A 
prepare project for my uh, longtime friend and customer. I need to adjust uh, this memory boy to give him some fond memories because now it doesn't really sound uh, all too good. Needs some bias adjustment. Also use this uh, tip cleaner goes on my bench. <laughs> think I will put this in the drawer from now. Uh, this is the most interesting stuff that <laughs> that was my quest in uh, in my old city because uh, I really wanted to buy the 63 slash 37 uh, leaded solder then the eutectic kind less than 63 percent Made in Portugal. I will do a little project uh, comparing the 6337 and uh, my old uh, 6040 solder. Doing one half of the hourglass uh, kit. Uh, same kit as you saw on uh, Imsa Guy's channel if you. <laughs> If you watch him. Yeah, I bought uh, three rolls. Uh, to be precise, I bought four, but uh, one of them went to my friend. So uh, those uh, rolls of, uh, of uh, solder, they will go uh, to the shelf uh, right, about, right above my bench. Nicely combobulated. And I've got uh, a few tons of uh, Omron switches for repairing the Casio uh, CZ1 uh, and uh, a uh, Korg uh, Poly 61 uh, synthesizers uh, I've got uh, waiting in my lab. I, I decided to replace uh, all the tact switches uh, in those synthesizers just to make it uh, more reliable and future-proof. So that's that. This is a printed circuit board for the <coughs> Primara a20 mark ii amplifier that uh, there's something wrong with the board the the bias on one channel goes haywire some of the components are desoldered transistors uh, there's no power transistors in this now the marking is uh, primara EM1061-5 and I'd like to fix this and uh, there's there's traces of uh, thermal testing on on the driver transistors <coughs> not too good if you ask me So this will wait. Vintage plugs. Uh, this one. This one goes to the Stradivari radio. I still haven't uh, returned it uh, to the customer, but I will do it soon. And uh, having a real deal vintage plug uh, from Germany, it will add uh, to the radios. Uh, Historical accuracy, 
And this is a uh, Polish uh, vintage plug. I will also use it in uh, one of my uh, vintage radio restoration projects. The knobs uh, for the visomat. They look pretty nice. Those grabbers I bought in an uh, electronics shop uh, with my fluke uh, in mine. <coughs> Should be pretty nice. Like, uh, I use the modular probes uh, with a uh, safety banana plug and uh, a separate probe and I've got a, uh, a bunch of different probes uh, and that makes all the, the, the setup pretty universal and now I can put those uh, grabbers in the cable And I can uh, grab uh, a, uh, a lead uh, of a component uh, on the printed circuit board, for example. It will hold the, the lead uh, tighter than ever Granger slices and uh, ensure the firm contact. So this is going to come in handy for doing measurements uh, in various uh, devices. And one of the tips for the weather iron, I, uh, I bought this one in uh, an electronics shop. This one is uh, a replacement. And uh, it hasn't really worked uh, all that long. You can see some oxidation. While this one is the real deal Weller one, it looks way better. And uh, there's one more tool that I'd uh, like to show you. This is the Pierre Giacomi SF-40-1 uh, uh, wire stripper. And uh, that's gonna come in handy with uh, solid core wires. The 0 0.75 uh, square millimeter that I used for wiring the tube amplifiers. And uh, how do you use this for stripping the wire, you might ask? It's very simple, you just put the wire through the hole. There are two blades uh, on the opposite side. You have to move the wire past the blades to a desired uh, strip length. See? Make sure that uh, those wires and those blades uh, face each other, then turn around once or more, one or more times and pull it back. <laughs> Stripped. Let me see you stripped down to the bone. <laughs> Let me hear you make decision without your television. And the last box, the smallest one. With a bunch of parts that I ordered uh, from uh, 
one shop uh, and uh, electronics uh, wholesaler that I uh, never thought even existed. Uh, they've been around uh, since 1990s and I uh, never even uh, stumbled across them uh, when, uh, when I lived in my old city. Completely obscure. So what do we have here? Look at this. <laughs> Arcotronics uh, 47 nanofarad uh, 400 volts. Those caps are going into the vacuum tube amps uh, that I will build. Hundred of them that should last for some time. Also got some other parts uh, ordered. Uh, <laughs> some of those parts I haven't even uh, I haven't even ordered uh, those parts. Holy bloody hell! What the hell is happening with this? <laughs> I guess that the the guy. <laughs> kind of liked me because I uh, visited uh, the company. <laughs> he didn't have too much time, but Rifa Electrolytic 33 microfarad uh, 450 volts DC. I Electrolytic long life. <laughs> I wonder if it will be uh, the typical Rifa experience of rapid uh, unscheduled discombobulation. That's a mighty fragging surprise because I, I never thought uh, that I would get uh, anything other than uh, those uh, archotronic caps and uh, the jacks, the uh, switch mount, surface mount, uh, mini jacks uh, that I uh, ordered uh, with one project in mind. So those are the parts I ordered. And those, all of those, they are the parts that came in addition. I, uh, I never really ordered them. <laughs> Holy bloody hell! 220 nanofarads, uh, 1000 volts. Look at that! <laughs> beauty! Thing of beauty! Joy forever! 3.3 nanofarads, 630 volts. 22 nanofarads, 400. Also useful in uh, tube amps. One and a half nanofarad, 400. I got a bunch of those. So yeah, that goes. Uh, that will be a welcome addition in my lab. Yeah, that... That will go here. <laughs> Before I opened this box, I uh, I never expected that uh, I would get I would get such a uh, surprise. Like uh, there's uh, there's the receipt, but <laughs> those are not the droids that I ordered. And uh, when I ordered uh, those. Uh, I expected to pay uh, what I paid. <laughs> no additional fee. Cute. That's pretty cute. So that would be the Boat City Hall. Boat City Hall, because uh, 
which uh, means belt in Polish. And even here in Poland, we often joke that uh, <laughs> we often jokingly name uh, Łódź uh, the belt city, the most post-apocalyptic uh, big city in Poland. <laughs> it could be a uh, nice uh, setting for another Fallout game or a movie because uh, <laughs> in, uh, in a lot of places uh, Łódź is uh, very dilapidated and um, <laughs> Sometimes even scary. <laughs> Not scary, scary. Okay, so for the time being, that would be it. But uh, you could expect some more videos real soon. And uh, while at it, I will show you one thing. Let's change the view. So I've got this finger magic and uh, if you saw Fran's uh, recent live stream, you will recognize it as something very similar from to what uh, she presented. This one was made in Poland in 1970s, I think. Any any date called uh, on the motor, 1972. The motor was made by Unitra Tonsil, the son, the same uh, that made uh, loudspeakers and speaker cabinets, and they uh, still continue to this day. It has a warm drive rather than uh, a. Uh, gear drive uh, making it a lot simpler the, the whole uh, assembly is made of phenolic and the rotor is also phenolic rather than teflon uh, or some other plastic it uses uh, carbon brushes uh, on contacts and some of those contacts are in a uh, really bad shape. Got uh, brass screws uh, for the contacts and underneath uh, each one of those screws we've got a spring that uh, presses a uh, carbon brush uh, against uh, one of those uh, half rings you might uh, you might see it uh, now you you should see them uh, pretty well coco is helping me <laughs> my good lab assistant uh, coco it's helping me as a uh, bright uh, background <laughs> trying to play with the plug <laughs> Coco <laughs> Cats of engineering and uh, this uh, this rotary distribution switch uh, it uh, applied uh, one pole uh, of um, of the uh, power supply <coughs> to one half ring if you if you take a closer look here there's a, a piece of wire connecting the the contact uh, to the half ring uh, here on the other side, uh, I might have to turn this a uh, few things, a few turns. Uh, Coco is playing with the plug while uh, I'm uh, trying to turn the router. But uh, we should be able to see this uh, piece of wire coming up. Uh, connecting the 
router connecting the half ring on, on the router with uh, a screw that uh, is in contact with the ground so on one on one half ring we've got the ground on the other half ring we've got uh, the originally high voltage because this was a uh, distribution uh, switch uh, from a uh, shock generator a questionable ethics uh, scientific device uh, for uh, testing on uh, living tissues or maybe even uh, organisms, animals, uh, etc. I got it from um, my friend at the medical university. I've got a few of those shock generators and I will uh, at some point uh, make a video about it because it's a pretty interesting uh, build. I, uh, I discombobulated uh, one of them and uh, took some parts including this uh, switch uh, and I was meaning to show you <laughs> this thing uh, for, for a few months uh, as soon as I uh, dismantled it uh, I forgot about it and uh, now that I saw a very similar device on uh, on Fran's channel I decided to bring this up uh, and uh, and show uh, this one to you with uh, pointing out some uh, similarities and uh, differences uh, between uh, how both of those are constructed and uh, the the disadvantage uh, of uh, of this switch is that uh, if the springs uh, under the screws are dirty or rusted, uh, the contact resistance uh, can go up uh, easily into the region of uh, hundreds of ohms, maybe even kilo ohms. So uh, this is not uh, gonna do well with uh, controlling the light bulbs uh, it might be better for controlling the bidirectional LEDs uh, that have uh, one uh, LED wired uh, opposite to another in parallel reverse parallel like uh, one LED scaffold uh, tied with another one's anode and uh, vice versa. There's, a, there's an uh, acrylic uh, insulator on the, on the contact. The, the pressure plate uh, has been broken off. Uh, clearly this has been damaged. But it will work. Maybe I will use it in some project of mine. So, that would be for this uh, little switch. <laughs> I just uh, couldn't wait on it um, too long. <laughs> and without further ado, I'll be back with some vintage tech on the bench as soon as I can, and for the time being, stay determined and carry on.